And finally, new rules since it's St. Patrick's Day. Let's recognize that as great a country as Ireland is, you can't really think about the Irish without thinking about division. And I can't help thinking about us right now when I think about that. The Irish island is still not whole, and Northern Ireland, the part that is still part of England despite its majority Catholic population, went through a period where political hatred born of religion turned into something called the Troubles, which meant the hatred got so bad it could not be contained by the usual means of disagreement. So people lived with bombings and sniping and urban warfare, what Tucker Carlson calls sightseeing. <laughs> In America, our warring factions aren't Catholics and Protestants, but that same level of hatred, of otherization, is happening between Democrats and Republicans. We've grown less religious, but that's because politics has become our religion. We used to pray for the nation. Now each side prays the other side doesn't destroy the nation. On one side, the Church of Woke wants to cleanse us of our past, and on the other, the cult of Trump wants to resurrect it. Trump is often depicted as some kind of religious warrior, and now he's talking like an end times religious nut. He speaks about an epic battle against sinister forces and says, I am your warrior, I am your justice, and for those who have been wronged and betrayed, I am your retribution. Oh, Jesus, thanks, Batman. <laughs> To get any closer to smite the infidels, you'd have to be standing in a cave with a Kalashnikov in a turban. <laughs> we will expel the warmongers, he says. We will drive out the globalists. We will cast out the communists. We will liberate America from these villains and scoundrels once and for all. Big talk from a guy who can't even shut up his girlfriend. <laughs> But that's where we are. Your fellow citizens who support the other party aren't just wrong, they're heretics who have to be destroyed. Political identities have become stronger than religious ones, stronger even than racial. 94% of adults are now cool with interracial marriage. It's interparty marriage that's a deal breaker for a majority of Republicans and Democrats who don't want their kids marrying someone who belongs to the other. America's national leprechaun, Marjorie Taylor Greene, <laughs> oh. she didn't invent our country's polarization any more than she could spell it, but <laughs> she's playing with the kind of fire that made Northern Ireland a living hell for so long when she says, we need a national divorce. We need to separate by red states and blue states. We're done. And then she threw Biden's things out on the lawn and said, I'll be at my mother's. <laughs> but a full third of likely voters agree with her and approve of a national divorce. With Texas the most enthusiastic, 66% of all voters there are ready to split, including 59% of Democrats. But you know, just voicing this idea is dangerous because it reinforces the belief that you can't even talk to those people. You just have to somehow nullify their very existence by creating a country only of your type of people. It's always such a tempting thought, isn't it? If we could just keep the assholes out <laughs> of where we, the good people, are, this would be such a great place. But where do you draw the line? as to how much someone can disagree with you before they're an asshole, too. Marjorie Taylor Greene and Lauren Boebert seemed pretty joined at the hip for a while. They both loved God, guns, and gas stoves. <laughs> but they reportedly had a bathroom fight in January, of course, over a guy, Kevin McCarthy. <laughs> But Marjorie, does this mean that Lauren doesn't get to live with you now in the new free republic of Jesus Zippy? <laughs> and what about your own state of Georgia, which has a Republican governor and two Democratic senators? What are you going to do with the two and a half million Georgia residents who voted for the Democrats? Put them on a plane to Martha's Vineyard? 
What about the 43% of Republicans who are for gay marriage? Does that make them rhinos, Republican in name only? And do rhinos get to live with you in dumbassistan? <laughs> or do they all have to report, deport to Oklahoma? <laughs> what about the 11% of conservatives who want strong borders but think the wall is stupid? What about the 12% of Bernie voters who listed their second choice as Trump? Sounds like this new red state country is gonna have to itself split into two, or maybe more, since there are many Republicans who want to legalize pot. What I call the good ones. <laughs> and same on the blue side. I assume abortion won't just be legal in Newsom land, but encouraged. <laughs> But what about the 25% of Democrats who oppose abortions? What I call the bad ones. <laughs> or the 28% who have a gun? Seems like we're gonna need a lot more new countries than just the two. Or we could just stick with the one. <laughs> the one. The one where everybody gets to disagree on everything, except for one thing. You have to want to stay in the marriage. You can't call yourself a patriot of the United States and not be for the whole united part. So this St. Patty... <laughs> so this St. Patty's Day, let's take that whole we're all Irish on St. Patty's Day thing and replace it with we're all Americans every day. <laughs>